What's up guys, today I'm gonna to go through how I created this super long zoom effect. For this effect, I needed to shoot five different video clips, all at different distances from the subject. So this first video clip, I walked into frame and I had the camera set at 75 millimeters on my zoom lens. And then for the second shot, I left the camera in the same position and just zoomed out on the lens to 28 millimeters, which is the widest I can go to on that lens. And for this shot and the next few shots, you don't need the subject in shot, but I still left this for around about 30 seconds because you get the movement of the leaves in the wind and things like that that just add to the effect. So after these first two shots, I then moved back in a straight line around about 20 meters to get this shot. And then I let that film for around about 30 seconds as well. And then for the next shot, I moved back another 10 to 20 meters and shot this video clip at 24 millimeters and let that run for 30 seconds. And then I just repeated the same thing, walked back another 10 to 20 meters and filmed this final shot at 24 millimeters. And those were the five shots I used for this effect. So now moving on to the editing for this effect, what I'm going to do is select the part that I want to use with the subject in shot. And I'm gonna import that into my timeline by pressing Q on the keyboard. And I'm gonna make sure this video clip extends to around about 20, around about 20 seconds. And then I'm going to drag in my second video clip that I shot. And I'm gonna drag that in underneath my first video clip. And then I'm going to select the top video clip and scale this down and move it around so that the edges match up with the scene on the video clip underneath. And it's not going to be perfect, but you wanna try and make this as accurate as possible. And I find if you go up to the opacity and turn down the opacity down and then up, you can get a good idea of how much scale you need to change your video clip by. So once you have the video clip, pretty accurately lined up. Then what I'm going to do is go to my effects tab and go down to the mask and keying. And if you want to do just a quick job, then you can add the shape mask onto this, increase the feather on the shape mask so that the image blends in with the one underneath it. Or what you could do is add on the draw mask effect and cut around some of the important parts of the image like trees and, and things like that. And you get a bit more of a natural blend into the image. Okay, so once we have the image lined up and blended in, then I'm going to select these two, right click and go to new compound clip, select okay. And then I'm gonna go and drag in my third video clip. So I just select two seconds of this, drag it underneath my compound clip. And then I'm just going to repeat the same step that I did before. So I'm going to select this compound clip and just scale it down so that it blends in with the video clip underneath it. When you're moving the video clip around, if you hold down command and click and drag, then you can get a bit more of an accurate positioning on it and it won't lock to these guidelines. Okay, so once I have it lined up, then I'm going to add my mask on and then just adjust the feather. Okay, so once I've added the mask and added the feather, then I'm going to select these both, right click, go to new compound clip, and then I'm going to bring in my fourth video clip and drag that underneath. And just make sure all the video clips are the same length. And then I'm going to select my compound clip and scale this down so that it fit in the frame, trying to match like the trees, the size of the trees and things like that. Okay, so now I'm moving on to my final video clip. I'm going to drag this in, turn down the scale on the compound clip and try and line this up. So for this final video clip, what I'm going to do is add a draw mask to it. And then I'm going to disable it by pressing V. And because we have these big objects here, what I'm going to do is draw around, draw a mask around them and use these like big trees as a frame to fit in the previous video clip. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm just going to add a mask around this tree. And if I turn on my top video clip, I know the mask needs to be inside of these edges right here for it to work. I know I can go up a bit further here and then I'm gonna come, come down the inside of this tr big tree here and then around here. So what I did was basically just use this last frame to create a frame for the previous compound clip. Sounds pretty confusing. And then I can feather 
just to feather this in a little bit. Okay, so now I can select both of these, right click and go to new compound clip. So now I'm ready to add the zoom effect. And to do that, what I'm going to do is select my compound clip, go to this drop down menu here and go to crop. And I'm gonna select the Ken Burns effect and make sure the start green border is, is the smaller one. So I'm going to press this button here to switch the start and end point. And then this start box, what I'm going to do is make this start box really small and drag it. And I'm going to zoom in to about 600%. So I can just about see the subject. If I turn on better quality, then it helps a little bit. I'm going to select the start box and make sure that the cross is where the subject is. And then the red one, I'm going to line up so that the crosses overlap, click done. So now we have this zoom out effect, but it doesn't actually zoom in enough to see the subject clearly. So what I'm going to do is right click, right click on the compound clip and turn that into another compound clip, click okay. And then I'm going to go to the crop tool and I'm gonna add another Ken Burns effect and do the same thing. So I'm going to make the start box nice and small so that it starts on the subject and leave the end box where it is. So now if I play that back, now we have that really long zoom effect. You can control the speed by cutting the video clip or extending it to make the zoom faster or slower. And what you can also do is right click, turn this into a compound clip. And then what we can do is actually add speed ramps. So if I wanted the zoom to start off slow, I could add a speed ramp here by selecting the video clip, hold down shift and press B, go to the end around about here, hold down shift and press B. And then if we speed up middle portion of the effect by going to fast times 20 and play this back, we get this super fast zoom effect, just like that. From here, what you could do is add some motion blur to blend everything in a bit better. I'll leave the link to motion blur in the description. It's a free download, which you can install into Final Cut Pro, and then you'll be able to add motion blur onto your video clips. And for this effect, you will have to add a blank adjustment layer underneath the motion blur so that it works. And if I turn this motion blur on and off, you can see it just gives a nice bit of motion blur to the effect. And I only recommend using this if you're on a new M1 Mac, otherwise it might slow your computer down too much. I also jazzed this effect up using one of my color presets, a halation effect, and also a diffusion effect. I'll leave all the links to those effects in the description. They don't come with Final Cut Pro, but you can buy them and download them so that you have them ready to use. They're all super easy to use, drag and drop onto your video clip. And then you can also change the parameters and customize it to how you like it. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe if you liked it and I'll see you in the next one.